and I think as some of you may have heard or seen the report that went out on the, uh, the decision made by the tribunal on the uh, Dingle Creek. And I guess my, my concern, and if I may, Mayor Luke, yes. through you to uh, Lee, Lee, I, I, and I apologize, I didn't get a chance. I was looking through the assessment rolls, and uh, my question is, and we know like this thing's been ongoing, there's been a lot of costs involved with hearings, etc. And I just wonder, these assessments will not change. I assume the county's going to absorb the extra cost. How's that going to work? I have many people uh, that were in the, I'll use the word, the $75 assessment range that have asked questions. Um, through the chairman to council, um, very convoluted question that I think that we likely have to prepare a very detailed staff response with respect to that. Some costs are attributable to the drain, some costs are attributable to Norfolk County. So we will have to go through everything to figure out how that's going to go. Their portion, for lack of, like their, their portion of assessment won't change, but obviously as with any drainage project, at the end of the day you get assessed based on the actual costs associated with it. So all of the legal costs that we've experienced to date as well as a lot of the other costs that we've been awarded through the system, et cetera, et cetera, we'll have to go back through and apportion everything appropriately. Okay, um, so is it safe to say two things? One, we're going to, I have seen the report on the decision made, but I, I don't know if the rest of the council have got a chance to see it yet. But uh, the other thing is, so what you're saying, will there be a further report then to uh, give us some ideas so we can answer to some of these people at the public? Yeah, uh, through the mayor to council, once this, is, this bylaw is approved, then we can proceed to move forward, and that will be part of the work that we'll be undertaking. Okay. is going back through and looking at all the costs, et cetera. Okay, because I know I, I, uh, there's a fear out there by many of them. <laughs> say that, so. Anyways, thank you. You're welcome. Councillor Height, and then Black, please. Thank you, Mayor Duke. Uh, <clears throat> I see on the, the second page here, 150, it talks about borrowing for this particular project, $3.3 million, and 1.8 basically will be attributed to the landowners. Uh, with county picking up a $1.5 million tap. Ouch. Uh, I think we only have, what is it, $950,000 in our drainage budget every year. So since this debenture can only be booked for five years, would it be a, a correct assumption that $300,000 plus interest goes against that $950,000 in that budget for the payment of this debenture? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Height, for this particular drain, we treated it a little bit differently than a typical drains that we budget for, and we did issue debt, or we were are going to issue debt related to that drain. Uh, as far as the 950,000 per year, uh, that's that's a an estimate that we put in every year to to handle all the other 1,200 drains that we have, and uh, we monitor that on an annual basis to make sure that that's sufficient funds uh, to to handle the the other drains and we, we adjust it accordingly. How will we handle the repayment of debentures within five years if it's not built to the drainage side of things? Who will, who will pay for that? Through, through the mayor to council, this, this particular project was set up quite differently. There's actually a specific account just for this drain. So it's not included in that money that we already have set aside. This was previously approved as a capital project several years ago. Okay, but we still have to pay for it from somewhere. Where is that somewhere? The, uh, we can certainly pull the, the financial stuff that was done back at that time. My understanding, though, is, is that, it's all, it, that, the, that we accounted for part of it through our normal drainage funds back in, I believe it was 2015 when they originally approved the project. So it would be coming out of the reserves for that portion and then the debt financing for the rest of it with the repayment so that it's being paid for through the, through the drain itself. Okay, I guess my question then is if this is so special, how come there wasn't a staff report that went with it explaining how we're going to actually pay for this stuff? 
Through the Mayor to Council, there certainly was a staff report in 2015 when it started. Right, but this is now 2018, this correct? Is the, this is the third reading of the same bylaw. Okay. If you, if you notice, this is bylaw number 2015. Dash 55. Mm -hmm. So all of I the reports and, every, and everything were done at that time. Mm -hmm. So this was just simply the third reading that we were actually able to do now. Um, we do the first two, and then we have the ability to appeal. The appeals have taken three years. We're okay. finally at the end of the appeal period. So in order mm -hmm. to move the project forward, we have to finish the third reading now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I have Councillor Black and Brunton. Thank you. On the same topic, uh, Mayor Luke. And you think that uh, Meister Dam was long? This is this has been going on for eons, <laughs> you know, for ages. I think I think Doug cut his teeth on this. <laughs> so that's a long time ago. Just wondered, questions for you to leave, start and finish. Do we have those times yet, or would that be coming in a, a report? And if so, when's the report coming? Through the mayor to council, as soon as council passes this bylaw, we can actually start working on all of that timing, schedules, et cetera. As you know, we've been going through appeal after appeal and various court proceedings to get to this point where this can actually happen. So we haven't actually moved forward with any kind of a work plan okay. because we've been three years in the making to get to this point. So if this is approved tonight, we can actually start working on it starting okay. tomorrow. Well, I get a number of people as well that are asking me what's going on and when it's going to happen. and. So hopefully soon. Councillor Brunton, please. You're okay. Anyone else on any of these bylaws? Okay, you heard the motion to pass these 12 bylaws. Uh, those in favor? Ms. Carey, thank you. I'm going to item 15. Are there any notice of motions to be brought before council this Evening. That's right. Yes, there is, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the clerk has a copy of it. I'm not sure. Do I need to provide you guys copies or whatever? It'll be in the agenda next time around, I guess. Councillor Height, this is a notice of motion, so we won't be discussing it this evening. Do you wish to read it out loud? You certainly may. It's at the, the resolution is at the bottom. Okay, so go ahead. no comments tonight? Not tonight. Thank you, sir. So that is notice to this council, and that will come forward, uh, I believe, the 10th of July. Is that a fair statement? Thank you, sir. Thank you for that. Other business, I will start with our treasurer, Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, today, uh, Amy Fanning, deputy treasurer, emailed all of you and senior leadership team our 2017 uh, financial statements for the Corporation of Norfolk County. And I'm happy to say that the annual financial information return will also be filed by the end of the week uh, this year. And I believe that's the earliest that we've ever filed it. Yes, it so, is. Uh, my congratulations to Amy and her team for getting that done. Well done. Thank you. Mr. Sluchenkov, okay, tonight, Pam Doosling, no? Mr. CAO, please. I have three items this evening, if I may. Uh, the first, uh, the bad news, is that the Globe and Mail is just reporting now that next week the federal government is expected to, and I quote, unveil uh, new regulations to allow outdoor commercial cultivation of cannabis. Um, which the indoor producers are condemning as unsafe and vulnerable to theft. I can only imagine what whole fields of cannabis will smell like if we're having problems with indoor grow operations or a few plants in someone's home. So we have that to look forward to. Staff will monitor that closely and report back on same. No shooting the messenger. The other two items. Uh, is that, and to be abundantly clear, we are currently advertising uh, through various periodicals, et cetera, 
the existence of uh, vacancies for the ad, uh, the advisory board for what we're at the moment referring to as the Norplex. So the, that's the public advisory board. Uh, we have zero applications, none. So I can only I can only surmise that somehow that hasn't got out into the public realm because I myself have been here for dozens of meetings where hundreds of people have come out. We know there's strong interest throughout the community, but as we sit here today, we have zero applications to sit on that advisory board. So I, uh, I just mention that now to uh, certainly, if nothing else, the, uh, the leaders in this room who know a number of individuals across the community, and uh, it's certainly ask that you encourage uh, people you respect to uh, throw their, uh, their hat in. The information is available on uh, numerous spots on our website, uh, also in local media. I'm not sure there's anything I've missed, but if so, our clerk will help me. Uh, they can contact Mr. Andy Grizel, the clerk of the county. He will definitely help you with that application. So no applications there. And lastly, uh, on a happy note, I'm proud to announce that the Corporation of Norfolk County has successfully hired a new manager of asset planning. His name is Jordan Sangers. Uh, he'll be joining us on July 23rd, uh, start date. Uh, he comes to us from a neighboring municipality. He has a good background, uh, both in technology and in asset management as a general proposition. Uh, we're uh, very pleased to have him join our team. Uh, those are my items. Thank you, Your uh, Worship. Mr. Cribbs, his last name again, I didn't quite get it. Sangers, S-A-N-G-E-R-S. Sangers, S-A-N-G-E-R-S. Correct. Thank you, sir. Mr. Cribbs. Nothing this evening. Thank you, Ms. Miranda. Nothing, thank you. And last but certainly not least, Ms. Robinson. The Long Point Causeway Bridge. I am pleased to announce that as of... It would appear about three minutes ago, the traffic signals have now been put into flash and both lanes are open um, and will be able to remain open. The line painting is completed. We have heard many, many complaints with respect to the speed bumps. Um, we are going to be monitoring that tomorrow and making whatever adjustments are necessary now that we've actually opened it up to two lanes. Uh, we'll be able to judge much better um, how the traffic is going to flow over that with respect to that. So the engineers will be on site tomorrow to see what else we can do. But it is open now to two lanes. The speed limit remains in place. Um, however, the load restriction was removed last week. Ms. Robinson, I want to just say on that, um, I know there has been a lot of frustration, a lot of challenges to the residents in that area. But I do want to say... Um, on behalf of council, thank you and everyone that has worked with you. It's been quite an effort since uh, around May the 15th was when I first was made aware of this. So in five, a little over five weeks, I think we're very fortunate. Staff that has uh, worked so hard to make as much of a terrible thing into something somewhat bearable. And I think we're very fortunate that we had a local contractor willing at this time of year especially to move forward and it's been about a, roughly what two weeks if barely that that this has went from um, what it was to two lanes open so um, it's unfortunate it happened we, we, we can't undo something that that happened that maybe shouldn't have but we certainly um, I think put in an extremely uh, good effort all around to to get things back where they are right now so we thank you for that is there any other comments here Councilor Height, please thank you mayor luke obviously i've seen the emails that we share with our concerned residents when they cc each of us and there's a lot of very upset people with us so i'm glad to see it was fixed as quickly as possible i guess you know a lot of the businesses are really frustrated i'm sure they'll be happy to see it go and one of the most frustrating things right now, and good riddance to those lights, is the, the ramps. We're not referring to them as speed bumps, we're referring to them as evil Knievel ramps. And I'm just wondering, in that process that you're speaking of, how long is it going to take to add more fill in front of it so it's less of a grade and so that the children don't bounce off of the ceiling of the cars as they go over them? 
Uh, through the Mayor's Council, we would encourage all children to be appropriately restrained in accordance with the Highway Traffic <laughs> Act, so that would not cause their heads to bump off the ceilings. Um, that being said, um, we're, we're certainly aware of those concerns. It's, it's very difficult with the traffic signals to actually judge um, the speed at which people are able to do that. We understand that it was causing people to slow down, which was causing the traffic to back up, which was frustrating people. They were running red lights, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we're certainly aware of that. We have the contractor available to do whatever's necessary. The speed bumps that were, have been installed are actually pre-manufactured speed bumps. Um, so it's something that's quite easy for us to control uh, with respect to that. So we will, apps, now that we've got it open to two lanes, we can actually see how traffic will flow appropriately and we can make the appropriate precautions and do the appropriate changes. We'll be on site tomorrow to take care of that. Okay, great. Thank you for that and uh, thanks for all your hard work and your team. Now, will we be receiving a cost report for what this interim measure has cost us? Absolutely. Yeah, and do you know when that would be? I, it, it's, har it's hard to say, but typically we would see invoices come in um, you know, within 30 days of, of the works being completed, mm -hmm. and then by the time we, we get something put together. So I would say it will be when Council's back in session okay. um, after the summer break. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wells. I know that you're leaving shortly. I'm going to ask you uh, on this and any uh, other business that well, you have. I, I was going to bring this up on their other business, but this seems like the appropriate this time. Is, um, this is uh, other business, and yeah. you're up first. Yes. And I just wondered if the county manager, he sent us a, a memo with regard to Mr. Valley and his handling off the, uh, the causeway, if he would make public what his memo said, please. Uh, it was a very good opportunity to thank uh, the G. Douglas Valley Limited Corporation for uh, Yeoman's work, um, ultimately, uh, both in a large bridge, I, I say bridge, it's more than just bridges, uh, but in its annual inspection of all of our infrastructure. Uh, but in this case, after finding that there was a problem, um, really helping, uh, helping us as an administration find a solution. It, it's remarkable to be able to reconstruct, in essence, a whole cover you know, a new bridge over top another bridge in a month is an extraordinary story. And I would imagine Ms. Robinson will be asked to speak about that in future years at conferences because there will be a lot of other municipalities with their jaws down. And like, I appreciate that this has caused a lot of hardship in the community, but this engineering firm helped us find the technology, affect the technology, bring the technology, just bringing it alone is a logistics imp impressive thing and then actually install it in really impressive by engineering and construction st standards really rapidly. Um, so really uh, it's quite impressive that this is a local business that did really well by uh, the corporation but more importantly by the Norfolk County community and I think we probably ought to acknowledge that. Anything further on other business? No. Councillor Sonnenberg? Councillor Brunton? Councillor Black? Uh, I don't know if this is appropriate time to, to do it, but we got a couple of emails, and I did forward one that was about the AMO, the NAFTA resolution. Can that be put forward now, or should that be put on an agenda? Maybe. Mr. Clerk? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, if, uh, if you'd like, we'll put it on the next uh, council agenda. If you Okay, please. and uh, also the green bug we got from Michael Samos from our uh, conservation group, uh, a green bug. They want a resolution as well, so would that go on an agenda? Okay, so thank you. Thank you, Councillor Oliver. Councillor Geisens. Councillor Columbus, <laughs> I got Mayor. a dirty look there. I, I have no idea why. It's okay. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to uh, mention something. Last Thursday, we had a good half-day session with respect to the Norplex. And then uh, I noticed in the bylaws tonight, we're looking to set up that subcommittee there to, to study it further. But I wanted to mention, uh, it's been mentioned to me to mention this, that not to lose sight of the motion that I put forward 
back in uh, late April with respect to, to the now called NARPLEX about the cost analysis for the proposed uh, multi-use recreational facility, how it would affect the taxpayer over a 20 year period, and about the fact that one component of a multi-use recreational facility can proceed as an individual standalone project. Just wanted to make sure that that is still in the back of everybody's mind because if it wasn't for this motion and councillors agreed, we wouldn't have had that meeting last Thursday. So it's important to make sure that we follow this motion. Thank you very much. Councillor Height. Thank you, Mayor Luke. You'll be pleased to know I only have 17 items on my list tonight. So you guys can sit and get comfortable. Uh, just kidding. Actually, I think it's 15 blocks, and that's that wall in Port Rowan. I drove by the Saunders Wall of Shame, and I didn't see that it was fixed yet. It's been a long time, and I'm looking for an update on those 15 blocks and the leveling of that wall. This is the one on Wolven Road? Mm -hmm. I know the one you mean, Claire mm -hmm. Lee. Uh, through the Mayor to Council, I'll, I can follow up and I'll report back to Council. I don't know off the top of my head. Okay, and uh, another one too, I'm being asked about a sidewalk. I know nobody in Norfolk actually wants any except some of the people in my constituents area. So, poor Rowan, we were looking for a new sidewalk. I'm wondering if I could get an update on that capital item as well. To the mayor to council the, is this the one for ducks landing mm -hmm. that you're referring to uh it's in the design process and i believe that there'll be a further update coming to council as part of the james you're gonna have to give me the correct wording the capital status report uh that report the muzzle report so uh senior programming i'm not sure how it works mr mayor in our senior center is that the programming is that run by our staff at the senior center? Mr. Cridlin? Through, through the mayor, um, it, you're talking about Sim Simcoe here, Councillor Height? You're talking about the Simcoe Senior Center here? It's the only one I know of. Oh, okay, there, there is a smaller one in, in Delhi as well. So, okay, Simcoe. Does the county orchestrate the programming for the senior center? Uh, through the mayor to Councillor Height, y yes. Um, we have a staff member that uh, does a lot of work there. Um, however, the group, um, I'm not sure where your question is going, but the group does some of their own programming and fundraising and stuff as well. So it's a, it's a joint um, venture, I'll say. I guess it's because of the Norplex that I'm getting calls. So obviously, some people in faraway communities don't really support it, but they would be happy to have some of the same services. And we just happen to have some community centers that are underutilized. And, and I know we've had a group come to this council with a deputation asking for more access to it for pickleball and different things like that and I haven't seen any movement on that you know and, and I know there's a lot of seniors in Norfolk County and well their community centers centers are sitting empty yes I, I believe Councillor Height that was asked a, f like a few months ago and and maybe it's maybe it's going to take yourself to connect those folks with 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 myself because I do remember the deputation and the, the, the tennis court was marked for pickleball. And as far as getting inside, we, I've heard nothing from the group, but may, maybe it is time that we do sit down and have a meeting with them because we're not getting anything at our end. And I think if we sit down together, we'll see exactly what they want and we can maybe work out a rental rate for the hall if, if it will work. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you very much. Uh, I have uh, just one item I uh, want to just report. I, I had a great Friday morning after I left your office. I was invited to the uh, official opening of the expansion of Voth truck bodies in Cortland and had a two and a half hour visit out there uh, with Frank and Margaret Voth. Another one of those terrific Norfolk success stories or someone in the family was driving long haulage trucks and came up and kept talking for years how I would design trucks differently and their children said, then do it. Um, don't talk about it, do it. So started making truck bodies one at a time in a place called Eden in the next county. And from there, what I witnessed on uh, Friday is just an absolutely astounding state-of-the-art facility that makes custom uh, stainless 
and some other types of steel, but mostly stainless custom truck bodies, whether it's a dump truck, whether it's a flatbed, whether it's something like, a, you know, the Union Gas or um, an Arborist vehicle with the bucket on it. They custom make these. Uh, they have gone um, in 10 years. They have gone from making that one truck and selling it at a time to this facility in Cortland. And they have, in the last year, increased their uh, employee uh, ease from 38 to 68 with the help sign is still out on the road 80 percent 75 to 80 percent of their welders are from the Mennonite community in the southwest of the county and had an opportunity to talk to many of them about what they do they will increase their capacity now in the next few years from an average of just under 800 boxes a year to as to at least three thousand. One of the challenges that Frank and I had a chat about, one of the challenges is this tariff, 25% tariff on the U.S. because a lot of the one quarter and uh, five sixteenths inch uh, rolled alu uh, aluminum, stainless, um, mostly aluminum, um, it's not rolled in Canada, only the U.S. So now you've got a situation with the tariff where their product is now going to have to absorb that 25%. And he said, you know, that's it's tough to compete when all of a sudden one day the biggest uh, material you purchase is that. So he said, we'll cross that when we get to it. I think we're going to see a lot of terrific things from this company. Um, they're shipping trucks all over North America, the boxes. And they are even have been a couple weeks ago into Australia looking for markets and, and certainly beyond. Um, so they just make you so proud of, of what they've accomplished. Uh, and I think a relatively short time, and we're going to hear a lot more from Voth Trucks. Um, a real success story, and uh, the county I know is very proud of these entrepreneurs we have in there. Uh, the last thing I wanted to say, uh, and, and Pam, this is something you may want to pass on. Uh, Frank Voth and Margaret told me that it's an absolute delight and pleasure to work with our planning department, our economic development department that were there for the, uh, for the ribbon cutting and lunch, and, and, and of course, uh, our building department. So I wanted to pass that on. They said... Just delightful to work with this group. Anyhow, I see we have two minutes, so I know there's 12 action items there for information at the end of the agenda, so I'm going to move to the confirming bylaw. Again, a reminder that next Monday is certainly our July 1st uh, holiday on the Monday where the offices are closed, but we'll be here at 9 a.m., so um, I'm thinking we've got a lot of reading to do on the holiday weekend. Moved by Oliver, seconded by Geisens, that bylaw 2018-76 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of Norfolk County at this council meeting held on the 26th of, J of June in 2018, that it be passed to be signed by the mayor and clerk and affixed with our corporate seal. Those in favor? That's carried. And thank you, everyone, for your assistance today. <clears throat>